Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, California Weather Watch. Today is January 6th, and right now we're looking at the visible satellite imagery. You can see the state of California here. If you notice this, there's a little bit of precipitation kicking up here. That's the leading edge of this modified Arctic front. It could bring a bit of snowfall for some of the eastern slopes of the Sierra Nevada as we go on in through this afternoon and evening. We'll take a look at that a little bit here, but the really the big weather event coming up here is going to be the very strong offshore winds, especially across Southern California high fire danger we'll look at that in some detail here as we go through the video this morning so uh, yesterday no storm reports out there it's probably going to change over the next couple of days with some wind reports no doubt across southern california so we'll be watching that closely peak wind gusts uh, for tuesday 50 miles per hour in the highest terrain you can see for some of the bay area included sierra nevada definitely going to get the stronger of that especially across some of the exposed ridge tops again this will be out of the north and east tuesday a.m through wednesday a.m today of course is monday you can see these gusty winds sacramento national weather service they've got it out for the higher terrain here 70 miles per hour over the higher peaks of this sierra nevada and again that is from tonight uh, january 6th uh, through 7 a.m wednesday january 8th now, just a reminder here that we do have the sneaker wave potential, you know, all the way up and down the coastline, down towards the Bay Area as well. So just a heads up for that. Uh, National Weather Service Bay Area also calling attention to this as we go through the day, uh, Tuesday afternoon. Now, this is at Hanford National Weather Service here, and you can see the Mono winds. Uh, you can see Edwards Air Force Base there. Look at this gust of 50 miles per hour, again, out of the northeast and out of the north for some of these areas, and again, all the way on into 7 a.m. Wednesday morning. Now, uh, the big story here is for Los Angeles. Look at some of these damaging wind gusts, 50 to 80 miles per hour, isolated to 100 miles per hour with some of the mountains and the foothills, down trees, power outages, low humidity and very dry vegetation, extreme fire behavior with anything that does get going. Uh, yeah, so definitely the alarms are being sounded for this weather event. we got gusty winds across a lot of the desert areas as well. Look at this, you know, Las Vegas even, 55 plus 40% chance, 60 plus 10% chance as well. You can see Barstow and Bishop included in there as well. So yeah, some uh, windy conditions. going to be a crosswind for some of the interstates across a lot of the desert areas also. And this is Phoenix. You can see the ushering in of this cooler air mass. Could lead to some mountain snows, muggy on rim, Flagstaff, for example, and some breezy winds, especially for California. Of course, like I mentioned, over the next couple of days, and you can see this desert center, Joshua Tree up to 50 miles per hour, Salton City, 45 there, so yeah, Parker, 40 miles per hour. So yeah, again, crosswind for the interstates. Uh, this is the chance of snow fall here. It does call for one to two inches for Flagstaff there, and you can see some of the higher terrain Again, California or uh, Arizona border is way over here to the left of the screen. There's Interstate 40 and Interstate 17 here, and Phoenix would be down here. Now, taking a look here, uh, if I put this into motion, you can see that precipitation making its way from north to south and kind of buttoned up against uh, some of the east slopes of the Sierra Nevada. So you can't rule out a few inches of snowfall with that. It even wants to squeeze a shower off across some of the higher terrain of Southern California as well, but should not amount to much. And then at this point, we're going to be driving some strong offshore winds that we're going to start to take a look at right now. In fact, this is 80 meter wind speed. So you see the wind start to arrive first across Nevada. Nevada and across some of the Cascade Range here, Sierra Nevada, the wind starting to blow out of the north for the Sacramento Valley. And then you can see that extend all the way down across Southern California. We start to ramp things up by the time we go towards tomorrow morning. Offshore winds for some of the Bay Area as well. But the strongest winds are going to be across some of uh, Southern California. And this could affect some populated regions. I'll show you more on that here in a moment. And you can see these very strong winds continue on in through Wednesday morning. Look at this just blasting all the way out across the ocean. And again, the crosswind for a lot of the interstates there across the desert regions. Strong winds across the ridge tops of the Sierra Nevada out of the northeast also. And that's going to continue all the way on in through the day on Wednesday at times. Uh, now, looking at this, I've stopped at 48 hours. This is the max accumulated 10-meter wind gust. You see the North American model actually shows some decent gusts there for Sacramento you know, towards 45 miles per hour. Lesser on the her 
high resolution rapid refresh since the 12z runs we're looking at but look at some of these strong wind gusts here all the way down into maybe thought the los angeles metro maybe places like oceanside not just a typical santa Ana wind event here this is a very potent windstorm coming in here or wind event i should call it here for southern california taking a closer look at that look at some of these wind gusts here for los angeles metro you know you're getting up over 50 miles per hour could be some damaging winds out there and I'll show you why that is here starting now. If we take a look at about 2,500 feet off the surface, put this into motion and you really see things turn offshore. There we go as we go through tonight across mainly northern central California. Then you can really see it ramp up here as we go through tomorrow morning and just kind of continue again all the way on in through the day Wednesday coming up. Strong offshore winds. If we take a look at 5,000 feet up in the atmosphere, you'll notice things again all the way up to 5,000 feet offshore northeast component there and then if we look at 10,000 what do we got same thing here look at the, all the way through the column oh, out of the northeast and that could lead to some potential mountain wave activity I'll show you the wording here from the National Weather Service they do a really good job at explaining it but we're looking at Ontario International Airport here you can see this is out of the west northwest and weak at the surface the red line is the temperature and you can see the temperature in celsius is along the bottom this is the dew point the green line here so if i put this into motion now watch the wind barbs over here and initially you'll see them switch there we go starting out of the northeast here as we go through very late tonight they start to pick up as we go through very early tomorrow morning and then you can still see they're out of the northwest above about what maybe 10,000 feet maybe 12,000 feet there but look as we go on in towards the upcoming period on the day Tuesday. Look at these winds really get rampant out of the northeast and look at everything shift. The entire column of the atmosphere is out of the north northeast for Ontario and this is a lot of Southern California and look at the huge dew point temperature discrepancy low relative humidities there. So when you get these very strong winds and they're going to be interacting with some of the higher terrain Look at this. A particular note is the possibility of the creation of some strong breaking mountain waves. These occur when very strong winds aloft intercept mountaintops at nearly perpendicular angles, which will happen with these events. These short-lived and very difficult to predict events can cause considerable local damage whenever they occur. The most likely areas for this phenomenon are the eastern San Fernando Valley and northern San Gabriel Valley. And again, some of these strong winds could be moving out to some more populated areas like Los Angeles Metro, for example. Now, taking a look at basically, you know, why this is happening, basically an inside slider here moving down. And again, the high pressure sets up over the Great Basin. Uh, low hangs off for a while, then moves off to the east. And again, kind of an inside slider here, because why not? We love these inside sliders with virtually no chance of precipitation. You, if you can detect the sarcasm there, uh, you can see another one after that as we go through the 15 day period. I mean, no signs of that warm southwest flow that could potentially bring some precipitation to portions of Southern California. So yeah, we're going to have to watch for drought development. We've already got some of it here across much of the Southern portion of California. And if we don't get any rain during the winter time coming up here, of course, it's just going to be exacerbated as we move through the spring and the upcoming summer months. Now, taking a look as we go through the day Tuesday, look at the temperature, uh, not the temperatures, the relative humidities really start to tail off here. And by the time we go towards the day Wednesday, look at these single digits here across some of the coastal areas and the desert's really drying out. So, yeah, the fire danger is going to be quite high as we go through tomorrow and Wednesday. And looking at the 16 day precipitation anomaly, West Coast below normal, nothing has changed. We've been watching that for a few days now. And this is the 15 day precipitation anomaly on yesterday's uh, European and and very good agreement with the GFS there as well. Six to 10 day temperature outlook. Look at that above, uh, below normal signal here for precipitation as we go through January 15th and still continuing on in through January 19th as well. So anyway, yeah, um, again, uh, watch out. There's high wind warnings up and whatnot. And yeah, hopefully you are prepared for the fire danger, especially across Southern California coming up here. We'll continue to check back daily and look off into the extended forecast to see what potentially could be coming or any kind of changes in the forecast. Um, otherwise, yeah, click like and subscribe. We'll do this all again tomorrow and I will talk to you guys then.